committee recommended that all governors to declare a state of emergency in the in education sector in their various respective states and demonstrate the commitment to revamp education. Also, the committee uh, also recommended a federal government and state to allocate a minimum of 15% of the state budget or federal budget to education in order to revitalize that sector. While the interim report is being re reviewed by the members of council, a more detailed report prepared and presented at the next next meeting when decision will be taken on the proposed recommendation. Edo State Deputy Governor Mr. Philip Shuaibu revealing the outcome of the National Economic Council meeting where a decision was reached to put a framework in place to declare a state of emergency on the nation's education sector. While the decision was welcomed in some quarters, some however believe there is more than meets the eye due to the timing of the announcement. And that is what we will be focusing on on the program today. But let's first see what made the trends in the social media circles in the past week. I'm Victor Mathias. Welcome to the program. The uncertainty over the whereabouts of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Nam Dukanu, was cleared as the IPUB leader was said to have been seen at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem in a video that surfaced on social media. Kanu state governor became an instant topic of discussion after a video of him receiving wads of dollars was released by an online newspaper. Though the state government has sued the newspaper, the State House of Assembly has also set up a committee to investigate claims of bribery. Nigerians went into mourning mode after Boko Haram carried out its threat of executing an aid worker abducted in Ran Borun State. This was followed by an attack which claimed the lives of over 50 people in a market in Kaduna State, as well as the abduction of a traditional ruler and his wife. Well, there you go. Those were the trends in the past week. But joining us to look at the topic of the day, we have Bengal Lauren Pomi. He joins us in our Lagos studio, um, obviously. Um, he is a political strategist with a sympathy to the All Progressives Congress. Thanks for joining us on the program today. Thanks for having me, Victor. And we also have joining us from our Abuja studio, Ben Cosmos. Uh, ben, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. It's a pleasure, Victor, having you too. Google Plus Hangout from Abuja as well. Um, we have Jude Ferromi. Jude, thank you for joining us on the program. You're welcome. Well, let me get you to set the ball rolling. I mean, the federal government has declared a state of emergency, you know, on the education sector. What actually is going on? Well, um, I'm happy that the, uh, the federal government, via the National Economic Council, that's uh, the uh, group of all the governors chaired by the vice president yeah. and uh, the federal minister and uh, all the, uh, the commissioners for information of education, uh, uh, no, finance have come together to agree that we have to take a step forward. We have to uh, declare a state of emergency in this very, very critical sector. This is a sector that is that on which 
the future of Nigeria is dependent on the education sector. So I'm happy that they've taken this step. And um, it just shows exactly how important the federal government is taking this issue, or especially the APC taking it, because uh, many of the things we see in that sector today, when we talk about, they talk about um, uh, millions of children being out of school. The latest uh, numbers out there are 3.2 million. Uh, a survey done in 2015, before this uh, government started, says that uh, about 13.2 kids yeah. are out of school. So, so talking about, I mean, out of school children, I yes. mean, the, the, this government, you know, launched a school, you know, feeding program. How exactly. has that helped to reduce that number? Um, well, the, the federal government under the APC is attacking this program with, on two fronts. One is through the uh, homegrown school feeding program, which you mentioned, yeah. uh, and through the Empower program. And I'll take them step by step. Um, the homegrown school feeding program ha right now has um, uh, reached out to over 9.6 million children in school. Uh, at the same time, what you've been able to do with that program is to engage more than 90,000 cooks to prepare this food, and over 100,000 farmers providing uh, this food for, uh, for them to cook, for the cooks. So what you have in that area is that you will see more children leaving the streets and um, coming to school. Is there uh, a figure at the moment of how many people have left the streets? No, survey, I don't think a survey has been done, but the interesting thing is this. One of the reasons some of us are so emotional about the Ocean uh, State is because that's where some of the programs that we're doing today started from. And from the numbers we have, enrollment in elementary schools in Ocean, as at the time the government came in, was 150,000. That number jumped to 253,000 after the school feeding program started in Ocean State. So we can extrapolate and you will see that um, it's going to increase the number of, um, the number of uh, children who now come to school. Yeah. Now, on the Empower side, over 500,000 people have been employed and graduates have been employed under the uh, Empower program. I, I think that, that's Close to 300,000 of them are now teaching in school. So yeah. you see that um, there's, a, there's a reason why these, these numbers would have improved as we 